guys. So in this video, we're gonna be doing some intake mods by adding a external filter, filter, and uh, swapping some carburetors and installing a arc chain tensioner. So this after the new carburetor's been on here. Basically, uh, I used to run this bike with no filter whatsoever, just plain straight open. But, you know, one, a couple of people kept nagging at me about putting an air filter on it. But the main reason why I put this thing on is because, you know, when I'm riding a bike, you know, I'm going this way, you know, and it's having to suck in air going that way. So if it's going this way, it's, and the faster you go, you know, it's actually kind of causing a vacuum from it going here and it's trying to suck in air. So what this is, where I put this on, is actually a scoop style intake, I guess that's what you call it. Don't really know. Uh, I couldn't buy this intake separate, so I had to buy a whole carburetor. It's only like $13, dirt cheap. I'll put a link down below too if you want to buy it. But yeah, since I came with a new carburetor, I decided to put it on because, I mean, why not? New carburetor is always better, am I right? So yeah, with this on, as it goes, uh, yeah, it's going to be catching a little bit of hot air, but, you know, it's still going to like kind of go in and kind of scoop in there more, and it can kind of capture the air, and it should run a little bit better at higher RPM because you're kind of forcing more air in rather than trying to collect wind going in the opposite direction at 30 miles an hour. So again, no, there is no filter on it. It's just a cover over it, but this cover will keep rocks and debris and whatever else from entering the motor. So yeah, there you go. There's my filter. And there we can see both carburetors side by side. Uh, you can see the primer bulb is a little bit different. Uh, the top cap right here is a tiny bit different. This one here, the threads are kind of stripped out on it, which is another reason why I'm going to switch over to this one. This one just seems like it has a Better clamp, bowl exactly the same, idle screw exactly the same. The fuel inlet, inlet on uh, each of them are a little bit different, as you can see. Down the throats uh, look pretty much exactly the same. Uh, this one has a more stiff choke arm, while this one's super loose, which is why I had to use that spring right there to hold the choke open. And on this side, pretty much exactly the same. Now, one little slight modification we're gonna do to this carburetor first and foremost, is we're gonna open up the top little hat right here and we're gonna adjust the needle. I'm trying to get this crap to focus, but you know, it's being a pain in the butt, don't want to, but uh, this is on the third setting right here, and on the other carburetor, the needle part here, our E-clip flew off, and I had to uh, monkey rig some bull crap together so it would be on the top position, which that's what we're gonna put it, we're gonna put it on the top, make it as lean as it could possibly be. Uh, this, the jetting is still stock at number 70. That seems to be the right, you know, jetting for this bike. I tried 65 and 68, but those just felt really lean. It just felt like the power wasn't there. Number 70 stock seems to work the best in this situation on this bike. And also the monkey rig modification I've done on the other carburetor. The needle it doesn't go down as far as it uh, should. Um, so hopefully this is going to go down all the way. So there, finally got it on. So now let's reinsert this thing back into the carburetor, put it back on the bike and test it out. So there we go, carburetor's back installed. As you can see, I like the uh, red uh, bits on it. You got the red ignition coil, you got the red primer bowl thing, red gasket thing, and a red intake. And red adds like an extra, what, 10 to 15 extra horsepower, even though this is a two horse motor. So yeah, definitely worth doing these upgrades. All right, y'all, so yay for me. Uh, last time I rode this bike, I knew the gas was a little low. This time, I didn't think anything of it. So, I uh, rode it around and now I'm all out of gas, which freaking sucks. The mid-range RPM is much better. It doesn't feel as powerful as it used to be. Uh, maybe it's because I had no gas in the tank. There's some speed going down the hill. At least I got pedal this crap all the way back to the house. But uh, yeah, the low to mid-range RPM, hardly to no force stroking whatsoever. The full RPM, didn't seem too bad. Uh, it does feel a little bit boggish for being lean, I think. So I'm gonna lower the clip just one notch on the uh, pin and see how that does.
All right, so a package just came in the mail. Let's crack it open and see what we got. All right, so what this is is a arch chain tensioner, and this is actually from Huge Motorize. Uh, I actually bought this because, uh, you know, I'm tired of this nuclear explosion bullcrap chain tensioner that I have, and it's fixing to blow up, and I'm actually going camping in a little bit, so I kind of want something that's not gonna screw me over while I'm riding. So uh, that's why I bought this, and this looks really heavy duty here. Well, it's a bag of hardware, so I'm gonna get to install this. So this chain tensioner, uh, wow, um, I've done a lot to it. As you can see, I put this uh, metal brace right here so it doesn't bind over and go in spokes and lock up the wheel and I'll crash. And I also had to, uh, you know, put a nut and a bolt straight through this wheel right here. Here's another look at it. The bearing actually in this wheel completely exploded and while I was riding it. So I had to just, you know, whip this bull crap together just to, you know, get me by. And the wheel is actually a little bit too tight. And, you know, this wheel kind of spins and not spins at the same time. And it's very loose. I've made countless number of adjustments to this thing and I'm sick and tired of doing it. And it just needs a new one. So that's why I altered the Hughes Motorized Arc Chain Tensioner. All right, so we got all the nuts and everything loosened. I'm gonna go and uh, clip this zip tie now. So I'm just gonna grab it and pull it all off. It's done. There we go, we're off. And here's one of the reasons why this thing kept screwing up on me, is that the nuts right here, I would thread it on and the threads would just strip out on sections of the bolt and I couldn't tighten it anymore. And I was like, what the crap is going on? So that's why I had to use all these washers and stuff in order to stack up against it all the way out so I could actually tighten the thing down. All right, so I know the chain looks super, super loose right now, and you're probably like, well, why don't you just take out a link? Well, here's the thing. Uh, I could take out that, but I mean, that's the outside edge, and like, that's not gonna go together. I have to take out this, and that'll just make it way too short, and it wouldn't fit. So that's why it's gonna have to have this extended amount of play. But no big deal. I'll put that in there, and I'll tighten it, and it should eliminate it. All right, so the main piece of steel is gonna go right there. Uh, I'm gonna get these U-bolts uh, in here and just kinda halfway thread it on there. I'm just gonna roughly assemble this, guys, and then, uh, and then go back and do it properly. All right, so we got the arch uh, kinda halfway to fullish bolted in place, three-quarter-ish bolted in place, whatever. Uh, we got the giant skateboard wheel or whatever. Why does that reflector have to be in the way? Like anything else. I don't know why stuff is gonna not go together while I'm trying to film, but whatever, I'm just gonna put you back on whenever I get it on. All right, so I got the thing just kinda halfway on there. I know it looks really stupid right now, but uh, the chain just will not let me take that much out of it because otherwise it ain't gonna go together whatsoever and that's like the last thing I want. So I got it kind of adjusted right now. It's slightly out of alignment, so I need to put a wrench on here and kind of bend this out so that way this wheel will ride in line and in the middle. All right, so we got it uh, fully tightened down. Got the thing or wheel on there. Got the thing straightened out so the wheel runs in line with the chain. It's in the middle. Um, rolls nice, everything. So now, let's put the clutch disengaged obviously. And as you can see, it doesn't roll too bad. It rolls really nice. All right, so right now I'm just pedaling uh, just to test the concept, make sure everything works and nothing's out of whack. And uh, so far, it all seems like it's good.
Alright guys, so that last little bit of footage right there was from King BMX from Stone Mountain when I was up there. It was the last video, I was also up there driving the uh, HBX Transit around. I'll put a link down below or up here somewhere to the video if you want to go watch that. So yeah, that'll about conclude this video. Uh, what it really needs is, uh, is an exhaust, uh, this expansion chamber with the silencer. I'm going to kind of hold off on, the, on that for a little while because, I mean, the stock exhaust is okay for right now. Um, but yeah, so I hope you liked this video. If you did, click all the other buttons that YouTubers tell you to click. If you didn't like this video, click a thumbs down twice because two's better than one. Three more doesn't work. That doesn't count for likes, as we all know. And let me know in the comments on how your bike is set up. I'd like to read it and uh, kind of learn more from some of you guys about motorized bikes. And yeah, y'all should see me in the next one.